like a Buddhist spaceship. Rolling. Do a slate. Chrissy, come. On. Puppet sheet? <gasps> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I love how when the sun comes out, the fans come alive and it's almost like you're hearing the light. It's a very zen uh, type feeling. I've got three fans in here total. I've got one up here, which is an exhaust fan that's blowing the hot air out that's up at the top. I've got this um, eight inch duct fan that also does the same thing. That one actually runs on 120 or from the battery, from the battery box. Um, and then I've got a small uh, seven inch fan here. Um, I'm actually gonna be replacing this with another with another 12 inch like this one. But these two run off those two solar panels. So as soon as the sun comes out and it starts getting hot, it starts bringing in cool air from the, from the ground and exhausting hot air out the top. Um, it kind of works as its own thermostat. Um, Uh, you know what this is? It's a water bottle. No, it's not a bong. It's a water bottle. <laughs> I put this put this tube on here to, to help reach underneath the um, reach underneath the branches a little bit easier. So, so far, so good. The uh, obviously the walls roll up and down, except for this back wall. I wanted this back wall to kind of be uh, a safe, dry space for anything that. Um, that needed to stay dry, whatever it was, whether it, whether it was electronics or certain plants that just um, um, I needed to cut back on the amount of water or whatever. 
This is also a shadier side. I've got shade cloth over the top uh, to um, block about 50 to 40 to 50 percent of the sun. Um, I've got these FRP panels, these white FRP panels on the ground that reflect the sun back up, so I'm still getting some ambient light in here, but it also helps cool it down. Um, on the, the top platform, I've got a, um, a solid black dunnage rack underneath that FRP panel. Um, so in the wintertime, I'll take off the white FRP panels and it'll help absorb heat. And it's uh, vented underneath it, so it gets airflow underneath it um, for the plants. And uh, it, it provides a surface where I can kind of slide the plants around a little bit easier instead of having to lift them all the time. This has been a really good uh, experiment putting this greenhouse together. I totally designed all the aspects of it from scratch. This, I don't think that um, this particular style of greenhouse had ever been done before, meaning that this is basically a, 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 basically a repurposed dog kennel. The, uh, the floor is actually, instead of sunk into the ground like most greenhouses, it's actually raised up above the ground. Um, I wanted it to drain a little bit better um, than, than most of the designs that I'd seen. So I put uh, white plastic down on the ground and put a level of pea gravel on the top of that. And then I put this white marble on the, on the top of that. Um, the white really helps reflect the, the heat back so it keeps it a little cooler in here. Um, and the way that I've got the plastic laid, it's almost like a bathtub design on this side because the water flows downhill in this direction. And then it, it goes underneath the, uh, the support beams on this side. So the water that's coming in from the yard and from the driveway, it just goes around it or goes underneath. And any of the water that I spray in here for watering or, or whatever just goes down through the gravel and straight out the bottom this way. I'm debating debating whether or not to look into a, um, an auto watering system. I've thought about misting systems. I've thought about um, just erecting a platform back here with like a, a large water drum with a, a gravity fed auto drip system. Um, I want it to kind of run on its own, you know, without any power from the house. There's no electrical drain, you know, jacking up my power bills. I definitely like that. You know, I'm trying to trying to find that that balance of that as little maintenance as possible. That's kind of the goal. Well. I guess I need a beer assistant too, because uh, the beer is just not going to grab itself, is it? So I'll give you the outside tour of the greenhouse. Obviously the, uh, the sides roll up and down, I just have them in these clips like this and I can just unhook this clip and, and drop it down to a, a lower wire you know whenever it, I need it more storm proof um, until how I cut the plastic around the doors and use the uh, uh, PVC clips there and you can tell how I wired the uh, solar panel up to the, uh, to the fan and installed the vent there just added this little decorative uh, fleur-de-lis. I guess it's actually a uh, house number sign or whatever for, for my uh, for my hose clip. Um, I'm getting ready to add this conduit. I'm going to bury this conduit in the ground alongside the, uh, the greenhouse to mount the uh, solar panel cables that are going into the, uh, to the battery box and to the, to the uh, solar fans. Um, here was another vent uh, that I added to have that 7-inch fan attached that. <clears throat> and here is where 
Um, this post right here is actually going to have two of these panels like this. It's going to have two monocrystalline panels on there. And then I'm going to move this panel um, probably to the other side. So I'll have three, three panels running and then I'm going to just bring this one back uh, inside to run my, uh, my portable uh, solar generator with that one. But <clears throat> got the, this is where the 8 inch duct fan comes in here and of course this wall rolls up and you can hear whenever the sun comes out how the, the fans kind of kick back on. So I will show you how I installed the wood frames. I just use zip ties. You can tell right here I just use zip ties to hold this down. <clears throat> you can see the zip ties there. And I'll show you how <clears throat> this thermostat, I don't know if I don't know if this is gonna come out in the sun, but you can see I've got it set to 89 degrees. So here's the probe for the thermostat. And once I hold, well, let's see. Let's see if I can do this where you can actually see the sun come on. I mean the fan come on. I'll hold this, heat it up, and you can watch the fan kick on. As soon as it hits 89 degrees, this fan will kick on. And then once it drops uh, back down to uh, below 89 degrees, it'll it'll just automatically shut itself off. Um, I'll give you a closer look at the the battery box. It's basically just a a simple. A deep cycle battery mounted with a solar charge controller here. It's kind of hard to see the numbers on it here. And then it's got the uh, 410 uh, watt power inverter and just some little extra odds and ends and trimmers and fertilizers and stuff like that. Um, Here's how I mounted the, uh, the intake panel. Once again, just use zip ties. It's kind of a flush mount. And these wires will be buried once I get the uh, panels up on the, uh, the post here. So, looking good, huh? Got some tomatoes that are ripening up here. So it's it's working out pretty good. Um, I think I finally got it to a point to where I feel comfortable. Uh, you know, I can go away on a trip and it'll kind of run itself for the most part. Um, and once I get the uh, the automatic irrigation set up to it, it'll be all the better. Okay, so here is my other uh, little side greenhouse uh, that I just kind of built as a, a lean-to design um, up against the house here with uh, uh, some two by twos or um, and some just this is just regular plastic here. This really isn't the the UV uh, blocking and uh, heat amplifying plastic. It's just uh, regular plastic sheeting, but I've um, got. A whole bunch of other pepper plants in here. This is the uh, this is the Carolina Reaper. Um, you can see this one's already starting to get some really good pods in there. Um, those are going to be super hot. Um, this is a chocolate ghost pepper, um, an orange uh, Craig's habanero. Um, this is a, a yellow jalapeno. Um, this is called a yummy orange pepper. It's another sweet pepper, and this is the uh, Jimmy Nardello pepper. It's a, a very sought after, um, widely acclaimed pepper. It's a it's an excellent producer. Um, and then some herbs, uh, another Medusa pepper, Thai hot pepper, and 
there's a whole mixture of um, so these are some of the uh, clones and seedlings that uh, uh, that I've raised this year. Um, there's a little bit of uh, mint, um, some yellow Scotch bonnets, some uh, manzanita orange, uh, things like that. Um, of course, you've got to have some basil and a couple of different types of parsley, uh, more cilantro, rosemary, uh, some chives, and a little bit more mint. But this uh, this greenhouse um, was basically just the um, place where I was just going to uh, kind of start a lot of these plants because I could keep an eye on them real real easily here. This the top part of this obviously I can slide it back, and if you notice how it's woven in between each one of the of the bars, and that's kind of what helps lock the um, lock the plastic in place. It it works amazingly well, and it's been through some major rainstorms. Um, I added this 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 part right here was kind of the the crux of this particular greenhouse because once this once the rain rolls off here, um, I added some stones in here to kind of weight this side down so it just pours right off the the back side here. It works it works really well, um, and I'm just amazed at how well the plants have actually done in here. I do keep um, some constant ventilation going on. Um, especially during the hot part of the day to um, control the temperature and to uh, help reduce any type of um, fungus issues or anything like that. But so far so good and uh, I think it's going to be a good, good producer for me.